Hello and welcome to the class today. So in the subject secondary or senior secondary education, we are going to study today the recent trends in educational technology, which are very much required for the successful curriculum transaction uh, nowadays. And if a curriculum, uh, you know, need to be updated time to time, so recent trends also need to be, uh, you know, implemented in our education system so that our teachers know how to use these kinds of technologies and how to, you know, implement these technologies or collaborate with their teaching methodologies. And for so for uh, uh, the learning objectives in today's class will be to explore more about these emerging trends in educational technology. And we need to be more aware and have to regularly update ourselves with the new knowledge of educational technology. So as we know, the last few years have witnessed a dramatic change in the teaching methodologies and the learning model. So the way students are being taught is uh, today is very uh, different from the teaching methods that were used decades back. So technology has brought about various changes and in the way education is delivered and received by the students. So from self-learning to flipped learning, uh, classroom approach, we have seen technology make a considerable impact on the learning and teaching methodologies. So here we can see that uh, these are the few of the emerging trends which are very much important and uh, very much you know, imbibed in our education system also in India. And uh, as uh, teachers of various subjects, we need to know about uh, the uh, trends which need to be used uh, for the benefit of the effective teaching and learning process. So with numerous benefits to offer, digital learning has become an important part of the education system. Schools and universities are trying to implement the latest in education technology so that they can improve the teaching and learning process. So here are the few uh, emerging trends like online education. Uh, digital and comprehensive online assessment, blockchain technology, uh, personalized learning, artificial intelligence based personalized analysis of individual, virtual reality in education, gamification, blended learning, uh, and MOOCs also. Uh, so we are going to uh, you know discuss about these one by one today. So first of all, we will discuss about the online education as we have come across this word in recent times, a lot of time. Uh, online education can also be known as e-learning or the electronic learning, which is done with the help of electronic devices. So courses that are online instead of in a physical uh, classroom can be uh, you know, known as the concept of online education. So any learning that takes place across distance and not in a traditional classroom. So further going, it can be a course, program, or degree, so which is completely delivered online. And nowadays, it is possible. Earlier, it was not. But nowadays, these things are becoming regular, and students are much taking interest in going through online programs also, taking online degrees. So various universities have been adopting, various schools have been adopting uh, educational technology in their curriculum, in their curriculum transaction. And also the teacher training programs are, you know, incorporated with various ways to teach our uh, future trainees that how to use these kinds of uh, various modes. So it is based on formalized teaching, but with the help of electronic resources. So uh, the resources for online learning are various. And in general, if we talk about a few resources, that is uh, the, the uh, common uh, uh, resources uh, that uh, like uh, e-books, the electronic books, the electronic journals, which with, with a, just we have to find out, uh, we can go directly to the website if we know about that. Or uh, through our uh, program, uh, we are being uh, made available the references or the links on which we have to just click and find out more resources. The videos are being given in the programs, the recorded lectures, uh, as uh, the one which you are seeing right now is also a recorded lecture. And it can also be counted in the e-learning resource. Uh, various kinds of quiz as we go through uh, the learning management system or make use of Moodle. 
uh, on which uh, various quiz discussion forums uh, we can go through live question and answer sessions um, that can be done in both synchronous and asynchronous manner which we are going to discuss further interviews can be done a lot lot of practice can be done online so how is it possible so fundamentally there are two categories of e learning and the first one is the synchronous and the second one is the asynchronous so let us now uh, look at the concepts what is synchronous uh, uh, you know e learning and asynchronous e learning so if we go by the synchronous e learning that is uh, it it is uh, on the based on the set pattern it is the phone or internet classroom sessions and synchronous e learning is real time learning so so as it can be we can say that uh, you feel as you are sitting in a classroom so the learners and the teachers are online at the same time and interact at the same time from different locations so you might be sitting uh, in uh, another uh, district of rajasthan uh, and a teacher might be sitting in the another district of rajasthan but you are attending the classes at the same time following a same link uh, so that will be a synchronous e learning so they deliver and receive the learning resources uh, via mobile video conferences internet or chat or maybe whatsapp is the uh, new uh, tool we can say, say uh, for synchronous e learning or we can make use of various kinds of applications you know uh, like zoom google meet uh, they are also helpful uh, for such kind of learning so in this type of learning the participants can share their ideas during the session and interact with each other and they get detailed queries and solutions so this is very much like you are sitting in an uh, you know real classroom so uh, learning from the sources of there are various sources like virtual classroom it is a kind of a virtual classroom you are not there in the classroom but virtually you feel that you you have a feeling of a classroom you are sitting in a classroom then uh, there are various apps as we have talked about uh, through audio and video conferencing synchronous e learning can be done through chat it can be done you know simultaneously the chatting may be done by the students they can ask the questions through chat or they can give their feedback through chat uh, the webinars uh, instead of uh, the uh, offline seminars the new terminology has uh, come on that is the webinars the application sharing or the sharing of various resources that can be done uh, by the teacher or with the students instant messaging Uh, instant messaging means like uh, what you do on whatsapp as soon as you uh, send a message it is received by the other person if he is uh, you know there uh, online uh, working on their devices so this is how we can uh, do the synchronous e learning now we will take a look at the asynchronous e learning and it is a learner directed or self paced learning so asynchronous e learning is pause and resume kind of learning so like uh, the recorded videos uh, which we have been making available to you uh, with, with the platform of youtube you can just you know pause the video wherever you want to uh, sink in with the concept or you want to find out more or you have a doubt you have to write down something and then again you can resume back with the learning if you if you cannot uh, you know go with the lecture at the same time you can just uh, uh, you know hear the lecture or see the lecture whenever you feel comfortable or when you have time or in the mood of uh, you know learning so in this type of e learning the learner and the teacher cannot be online at same time so this is a, a, a opposite of synchronous e learning and it may use technologies such as email which does not mean that you have to be on there sitting on your email blogs uh, which you can find out uh, various the online journals which we, we can say the discussion forums on which the students can be you know given a topic to discuss among themselves ebooks cds dvds etc the material which is available or made available by the uh, teacher or the links have been provided by the teacher so learners may learn at any time so there is no fixed time for their learning they can do at uh, do that uh, at their self pace and they download documents and chat with teachers and also with co learners so this is how asynchronous e learning takes place and uh, uh, for this the various sources are like self paced online courses so these kind of courses if you uh, enroll in any kind of 
such courses you will find out that uh, you have you are being given time like uh, after seven days they will give a quiz and within seven days you have to go through uh, that that week you have to go through the material which have been provided uh, in, in in the uh, course so you can do at your own speed so you have been given a time and at any point of time whenever you are ready to learn you can go through that so you can uh, regularly interact in discussion forums and groups so you can just type and leave the message there and if, if anyone else is uh, wants to contradict or wants to reply to your message they will uh, you know leave a message on your message reply to that so that that is how the discussion forums work the message boards where you get to you know know the message is uh, circulated among all the participants so this is how uh, we can say with online learning you can earn a certificate or diploma without setting foot in a physical classroom and nowadays our uh, you know the education ministry is working in this area so that you can earn a degree or diploma or certificate sitting in a remote area also so with this online learning uh, you have capacity to uh, you know learn from various uh, international reputed institutions so you can work full time while you study so set your own schedule study in the early morning your lunch break or even the middle of the night so you can uh, set your own schedule with online learning if we say so you can interact with students with the help of discussion forum across india and around the world so you can get a quality education without leaving your home community so this is how uh, beneficial online learning is for you so uh, uh, talking about the terms of benefits of online education it is preferred by individuals who may not be able to make it for classes in a traditional you know going to the classes regularly and uh, colleges or the schools for various reasons so flexibility is there so students have the freedom to juggle their careers and school because they aren't tied down to a fixed schedule uh of course it leads to reduced cost because online education can cost less due to a variety of reasons for example there is no co cost for transportation or commuting so assorted costs that are related to transport such as fuel parking car maintenance public transportation this does not affect the online student and uh, networking opportunities uh, of course online education also provides students with the chance to network with peers across nations or even different continents so it gives you global opportunity documentation all the information that you will need will be safely stored in an online database you just have to go uh, to the link and uh, you you will just you know uh, in, uh, enter your uh, id your password and you can uh, find the database stored there all the information is there and whenever you want to do it on your own schedule with your own schedule so this includes uh, things like live discussion documents training materials emails or any kind of messages or the references the links the latest uh, updates so all this is safe uh, online it is not just that you have clicked and it is missed so you can go and click that uh, there is an you should be a member of that um, you know course or uh, the link which have been provided to you by the teacher and you can find the uh, relevant document so uh, with online education increased instructor student time students in traditional classrooms may not get the personalized attention they need to have concepts clarified this increases the chances of a student performing well due to the time their instructors give them this also enhances their problem solving and communication skills as well as knowing how to defend their arguments to superiors if needed uh, they are given access to expertise so online classes allow the sharing of expertise that helps more people have access to education that is uh, not readily available at certain geographic locations like uh, sitting in a remote area you can do a course from iit you can do a course from a uh, you know um, international reputed institution so this is how you you can uh, all have access to expertise 
these are the top e-learning resources for effective learning today. Like uh, Coursera is very much popular. Uh, it has around 1,000 courses uh, from the best universities in the world. So it is a mecca for digital learners. So Coursera is also offering complete specializations for learners who wish to explore a subject in detail. So on successful completion of courses, you get a certificate also. So there is an, another pl platform right, like EDX. It also offers some great courses from the best universities around the globe. Then there is YouTube. Uh, we all are familiar with the YouTube because it is not uh, simply watching uh, simple videos uh, or the music videos there. It is a great platform for, for learning new things. Like you are being able to be a part of uh, this uh, initiation by us that you can watch this uh, recorded uh, lecture as many times as you want to and whenever you want to. And you can also share this lecture with others who are willing to learn this. So YouTube is a great, great uh, platform. You can easily find tons of great educational videos on YouTube. And all you need to do is to type what you want to learn in the search box. So this is very much familiar with you. And it will show you hundreds of pertinent results. So it depends on you what uh, if there are options for the subscription where you can just subscribe and go through the relevant link. Subscribe to some viable educational channels and stay tuned for the latest videos to help you develop a more ingrained comprehension of any subject. So, uh, you know, uh, through uh, various kinds of videos on YouTube, you can learn uh, plenty of things which you are not aware of. So it has make our life very easy. Then there is Khan Academy. This is uh, another popular platform for school and college students as, as it focuses on nurturing a strong foundation that they can build on and advance their careers. So you can learn computing, science, mathematics, economics, humanities at your own pace. So they have material available for all courses, thanks to its wide area of video tutorials. Then there is another uh, uh, e-learning platform like Open Culture. So they had they have uh, audiobooks, movies, ebooks, and it is a repository of valuable knowledge. And they have, you know, uh, neatly arranged uh, all material into categories and so that it is easier to access the information which you are looking for so definitely technology has made our things uh, you know to be handled very easily then there are another uh, uh, famous uh, online platforms like future learn or the un academy which we find the ads uh, now and then so um, uh, for those of you who do not know what is an academy, it is an Indian online education technology company based in Bangalore. And the company has a network of over 18,000 educators. And it offers preparation material for several professional and educational entrance exams. So by giving you know, a certain amount of uh, you know, the paid version, you can become a member and you can prepare uh, for uh, entrance exams for various kinds of courses which you want to get into or various kinds of competitive exams which you are fighting for. So an academy lessons are in the form of live classes, uh, both free and via subscription. So this type of education has uh, grown really over the past uh, few years and has experienced mainstream acceptance. So with an online class, you get to control your learning environment, which ultimately helps you develop a deeper understanding of your course. So new models of learning are also springing up in the market, providing students with varied opportunities to fashion their education into something that fits them, not the other way around. So it also provides individuals an opportunity to finish a degree they might have started and were not able to uh, you know, complete it for one reason or another. So the future of online degree education looks promising and opens up education to a larger section of the population than ever before. Then the other trend which we are seeing is the digital and comprehensive online assessment. And uh, in the pandemic era, we are able to see that various schools have moved on to online platforms and they are doing assessment online only. So it is a method by which specific abilities and skills can be evaluated through the internet and through the, with the use of various apps. So the advantages of online assessment are overwhelmed by both the exam candidates themselves 
and for the institution providing the assessment. So the types of benefits attained will depend on the online assessment software used. Uh, but one predominant positive output is that institutions greatly decrease the administrative burden of managing and conducting exams. So this is also very beneficial for the institutions because uh, uh, the less burden the, uh, the faculty or the uh, staff will be able to do uh, more uh, productive work. So uh, the candidates who are giving the exam can work on a computer in a way they are used to with rather than using pen and paper. So this is this has become an, uh, you know, uh, uh, our part of our lives. So this makes it much convenient to give necessary feedback to candidates on how they are doing areas where they are good enough and what areas of learning require, you know, their attention to be catered. So it is much faster to check online and candidates feel much convenient and comfortable for receiving the results steadily. So digital online assessment is more cost effective due to the huge uh, decrease in administrative time, managing the whole exam creation, delivery, checking methodology. So it is also controllable to add extra time for candidates who need special considerations. Digital online assessment facilitates fasten and clear reports on candidate output and progress. So a proper record can also be maintained. And this is how many of the institutions, many of the schools have been working, uh, you know, uh, since uh, last um, a few years uh, because of the pandemic situation and these online assessment tools have uh, uh, you know given them uh, various wide uh, wide variety like google forms it is very easy to use kahoot poll everywhere neopod socrative mentimeter so these are the few uh, you know applications and there are several different types of educational assessments which we can do online like pre admission test periodic assessments, uh, course-based assessments, classroom-based assessments, uh, mock assessments for practice or for the certification. So online assessment tools for teachers are a necessary part of the remote learning picture. So we can go through uh, various apps like Socrative, uh, which is very much popular for the quiz. And you can go through the link for finding out more that how you can use, make use of such uh, platforms. Google Forms is very easy to use. So most of the schools and the most of the teachers are uh, using Google Forms for various purposes. And it's quick and simple to create and automatically grade quizzes. Even if it's your first time using the tool, you will be able to go through this kind of form very easily. It creates multiple choice quizzes or short answer quizzes and make an easy answer key with point assessments for each question. So, so this depends that how you want to use the Google form. You can also share grades with students at the click of a mouse. So this is how you can go through uh, various uh, educational videos on YouTube to find out that how Google form can be used. Then there is Mentimeter. Uh, they also uh, provide for the uh, various uh, creation of quiz and test. And uh, it is you know uh, very much easy to use. Then there is poll everywhere which is also uh, being used by various teachers so uh, teachers can get real time feedback in their question slides without calling on specific individuals so technology has made uh, the life very easy for us then there is kahoot so kahoot is very popular among the students because it is fun to uh, you know learn and it is a game based assessment tool so teachers can choose from more than 40 million ready to go learning games or create their own in few minutes. It hosts games live or as assignments. So if you want to go through Kahoot, you can find out, uh, go through the video, and then you will be able to find out that uh, it, it creates a healthy competition among the students. And students can even create their own Kahoots to share with classmates, uh, creating an interactive experience. It creates a quiz game in minutes. It import questions from spreadsheets. You, you have you know, a 500 million item question bank available with them. So it is a, a very easy to use on various devices. So the students and uh, the teachers both can use make use of this kind of app. Then there is the next trend is blockchain technology. So this is how the blockchain technology is uh, you know, spreading fast in our education sector. It is a new way of thinking about how we organize and utilize student and even faculty data online, providing them with a sense of ownership 
ease of access and immutability. So it just may take over the way we store education data in the future. So uh, it also reduces or eliminates the threat of student data theft. So records which are accessible on blockchain system cannot be modified by anyone. So students with a profile on platforms can attempt multiple courses and everything will be published on their public profile powered by blockchain technology such as example is EduBlock. Then there is Badger and Mozilla Open Badge, which are being used to provide digital certifications to students in some prestigious academic institutions. It can also solve complexity of tracking intellectual property. Then there is MOOC certifications and blockchain. So uh, the institutions which are pr providing MOOC uh, courses, blockchain can solve the apparent problem of authenticity by providing a formal process of issuing and uh, managing uh, certificates. So various uh, MOOC providers are like EDX, uh, SWAM platform, Novo Ed, Course Era, and many more. So blockchain technology has the potential to accelerate the end of a paper-based system for certificates. And this is how education ministry is also working on it, like on the, on the black blockchain technology, in which the universities are being asked to upload the certificates, the degrees of the students uh, on a certain platforms, so that everyone, like uh, we are using the apps like DigiLocker, where everyone can upload their uh, documents uh, with certain, uh, you know, uh, security, safety, as uh, mentioned by the government. And uh, we can access that and it is, it is acceptable by others also in the educational organizations. So it can be used for validating credentials. Educational systems can automate and standardize many of their functions through decentralized autonomous network. Then, uh, of course, uh, online education or the recent trends, uh, you know, helps in personalized learning. It involves an educational environment and curriculum that revolves around each individual student's needs and abilities. So using technology to connect with and engage students is an excellent way to provide personalized learning. For example, if we use game-based learning systems, it allows students to learn at their own individual pace and have fun also while doing it. So we can see that the uh, you know students uh, really enjoy such kind of apps and uh, they uh, learn to use the technology. So this is how the school students also take interest. Uh, one example is Prodigy Game. So it offers content from every major math topic and covers first to eighth grade. Then there is AI-based personalized analysis of individual, that is the artificial intelligence, which is, uh, you know, uh, 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 developing in our uh, education system at a fast pace so it gives individualized learning because artificial intelligence allows focusing on the individual needs of the students and many large edu education platforms like carnage learning uh, is investing in uh, ai to provide more personalized courses as artificial intelligence becomes smarter it might be possible to scan and analyze students facial expressions so if the material is too complicated, the platform can change the lesson depending on their needs. Like, for example, you must be aware that um, while uh, th there are many of the universities have been conducting their uh, exams, the final year exams or the regular degree exams uh, through uh, the various uh, apps like the VBOX, on which it is also an AI-enabled uh, application in which if they can, uh, you know, um, uh, identify any kind of other device if there is in the room available they will give warning uh, it, it, it the auto, the app will automatically provide warning to the student or uh, if uh, you know the student if there is any other person in the class in in the in their room while they are uh, doing the exam while they are uh, writing the exam so uh, it, it can get warning that uh, there should not be another person in the room so this is how the ai works in our education system then we are very much familiar with the voice assistants like amazon alexa apple's siri google home uh, this allow interacting with various learning materials without communication with the teacher so just by saying it uh, the result will be delivered to you. So as a result, it's possible to use an education platform anywhere and anytime. 
and for example arizona state university uh, has uh, you know st started using alexa for routine campus needs the assistant can answer common questions or follow the student schedule they can ask as many time as they want to then ai provides smart content uh, for various learning materials for digitized textbooks to customized interfaces so a uh, few examples are the content technologies then there is netex learning so the real time feedback digital curriculum this all can uh, take place uh, during the smart content then it, it it also give you know opportunities for global learning it brings a lot of opportunities to share knowledge all over the world so uh, with using with the use of artificial intelligence uh, students can study various courses and training programs there are a lot of platforms with interactive learning materials from the best tutors AI also provides opportunities for students who speak different languages or have any kind of visual or hearing problems. Uh, for example, we can say presentation translator is an AI based solution that creates subtitles in real time mode. And we are very much aware what the subtitles is. Uh, if you have, you know, enabled your YouTube or your Google Meet uh, for the subtitles. So whatever uh, the, uh, you know, the tutor is speaking, whatever we are speaking, you will be able to read it on your screen also. So that is how the artificial intelligence works. So using AI speech recognition, students can hear or read in their native language. So this is how you, you must be using uh, various entertainment apps like the Netflix or the Amazon Prime on which if you want to, you know, uh, uh, read um, the uh, uh, whatever dialogues are being delivered in your own language or other languages which are made available. So this is, this is how the AI speech recognition works in education system. So there are a lot of uh, tech driven solutions in the education industry nowadays. And a few examples are Dreambox, Khan Academy, Achieve 3000 and many others. So these platforms can analyze the level of knowledge, offer backward communication. It provides a plan for improvements and so on. So there are various kinds of examples uh, you can go through, like the third space learning, Little Dragon, CTI, so uh, Brainly, Carnegie Learning, Thinker Math. So it is quite promising. This area is quite promising due to incredible opportunities for development. Uh, even the CBSC has introduced artificial intelligence for the school students and uh, for, uh, you know, um, for practicing, for finding out the success of this kind of program, they have introduced in uh, selected schools so that they can say that how this artificial intelligence is going to be, uh, uh, you know, fruitful or useful for the students at uh, this age. So this is how disruptive technologies and artificial intelligence are making their way into classrooms. As various, uh, you can see uh, in the picture that this is a humanoid, a robot, which has been prepared by this school. And uh, uh, we will now uh, go through how this uh, humanoid is working in the class. So students are sitting you know, easily in the class, and they're very much familiar that uh, with this. But this does not mean that there is no teacher in the class, and everything will be told by the robot. So it is only a, you know, intelligence which is being used in the class. So uh, the students can interact with them as teachers do. And uh, there is an example I have given, given here of the Indus International School in Bangalore, Bangalore, which they have prepared a humanoid. And you can go through uh, uh, the uh, link or in which you can find out more about the humanoid and how the uh, school is making use of this kind of robot in their classes. So it has been introduced, as we have talked about, as a subject in classes 8th, 9th, and 10th from the session 2019 to 2020 in CBSE schools. And the initiative has been undertaken in schools affiliated with the CBSC the Central Board of Secondary Education, in order to enhance the multidisciplinary approach in teaching, learning, and to sensitize the new generation. So CBSE has uh, collaborated with several organizations for the training part, because all our teachers will not be familiar with this concept. So such as Intel, IBM, Microsoft, uh, you know, private schools, and so on. So as part of the collaboration, which is formed with Microsoft, 1,000 teachers have been nominated by CBSE, 
and which underwent a three-day project-based training for practical hands-on knowledge of Microsoft 365 tools, such as OneNote, Flipgrid, Teams, Outlook, and Minecraft, and Paint 3D Microsoft. So these all are you know, being used by various schools. I have gone through uh, various articles where you can also find out more about this, that how they are using these kinds of apps uh, in their schools. Then there, there another trend uh, which have, we have heard a lot of times is the virtual reality or the VR in education. So it has entered the world of education through the big door, creating new resources to teach and learn. Students absorb information much better if they enter a 3D environment. That makes everything more fun, exciting, and enjoyable. So for example, we can say virtual reality allows you to explore travel wherever you cannot go right now but with the help of virtual reality you will be able to travel without leaving the classroom so visit what you want to learn without moving here and there have a greater professional orientation and much more you must have gone through uh, the planetarium uh, uh, in uh, situated in our city uh, where you can find out more about just by looking at the screen more about our universe. And we don't have to travel to uh, find out uh, to the space, uh, to the planets to find out more about them. We can just do it right and uh, sitting here. So the main uses of VR in education is uh, that it, uh, you know, create such environment which involves managing robots from a distance so in class children can learn to program a robot to perform certain tasks and use virtual reality to experience the actions of this robot in first person uh, they can witness what happened in history because they are not able to go at that time so they can witness that as a first person you know the primary source go deep into a human body and experience new learning experiences from a different point of view. So they will see everything much better than through explanations and images. And with virtual reality, students will be able to travel in time and space. They can go anywhere we uh, want them to see, return to the past, or unveil the mysteries of the future without limits and without big expenses. So making trips to developing countries through immersive education brings students also closer to other communities, foster various values like kindness and empathy with others. So virtual field trips, you must not have heard about this uh, concept, but you have heard about field trips. Now how it will be carried out virtually? So this, is, this will be um, uh, more interesting to know that uh, it, uh, it can be you know, uh, done and in a very short amount of time, these have managed to become the best applications of VR learning as they can travel the students to any place in the world without them having to move from their seats. Imagine being in a geography or even a history class and learning about a certain place and its importance while being able to actually see everything that you are being taught. So this is truly one of the best ways to teach students of any age about the wonders of the world where they can explore everything they wish on the planet and actually make learning a lot more fun and interesting. It can be used in the distance learning. So one of the best things about virtual reality is that it can truly help everyone who is attending a class, no matter where they are at. So they may learn by, by sitting at their home also. So there are many people who might not have the privilege to actually attend a classroom. Uh, like many uh, you know, higher education uh, students can uh, be in the situation and one of the best examples is the San Stanford School of Business which is already offering a certificate program which can be fully delivered through virtual reality. So being able to watch a lecture online while not being able to attend is already helping break a lot of barriers in education and is a very promising field with many more universities and schools joining in the future. Then the another trend we need to talk about is the game gamification of the learning or the game-based learning techniques. It is commonly known that the best way to teach something to a child is through a game. They love stories, they love fun, they love games. So virtual reality can give teachers the opportunity to approach learning games from a different perspective. So there are many ways in which games can be improved through VR. 
First and foremost, VR games are a lot more interactive than regular games used in the classrooms. The children can interact a lot better and share their experiences without being judged on their abilities. And uh, not only that, but uh, interactive and uh, you know kinesthetic games are known to help players memorize the things they come across in the virtual games. So this can uh, truly help students uh, at better in uh, memorizing things and increase their ability to learn. So it improves various skills. So it, is, uh, it has offered students the chance to apply their skills also. Whatever is being uh, taught in their classrooms, in, uh, you know, uh, they can apply this, these skills in various scenarios which they face. So we can say that law students are already benefiting from VR representations of real trials and other fields of studies. Uh, so other courses are also taking the lead for that. So it has also improved better cooperation with students and teachers. So this is how by looking into the camera, uh, uh, the 3D technology can be used. And they are actually able to rotate this globe or the Earth and find out the various places or whatever they are being taught in the class. So through this, you know, devices, through these devices, uh, this is how the this works. And uh, when you think of in incorporating virtual reality in a classroom, you might probably believe that it completely takes away the opportunity for the teacher to focus solely on each and every student. The students won't have to feel ashamed to ask something in front of the entire classroom because it will give them confidence. Uh, this whole experience is a lot more personal and it can really improve the cooperation and the relationship between a teacher and a student. So gamification, as we have been discussing right now, it is a, a you know, education is developing approach for increasing learners motivation and engagement by incorporating game design elements in educational environments. So as we all know that students love you know, gaming. Then uh, there is another concept which uh, we have been uh, hearing it uh, quite often that is blended learning. So here we can see that why it is known as blended learning because um, uh, in, the, in the present scenario, we can see that neither offline classes are possible and neither online cl classes are uh, giving those results which are required. So what is the you know, uh, solution? The solution is the blended learning. Uh, that is the blend of online and the real classroom, traditional classroom. So how it works, it is a combination of offline, that is face-to-face -face traditional learning, and online learning in a way that the one complements the other. So it provides individuals with the opportunity to enjoy, enjoy the best of both worlds. So although there are four basic models of blended learning, the possibilities are endless when it comes to ways in which instructional technologies can be blended into a teacher's pedagogical approach. So the flipped classroom, for example, is one type of blended learning model in which students view lecture material prior to class, before coming into the class, and then spend class time engaging in exercises under the supervision of the teacher. So this is uh, a very much a popular concept which is being uh, used today in our classes. And in other blended learning courses, instructors record videos for use as supplemental course material. The, this video can be an example for blended learning. And it is designed to help students with more challenging concepts or for those that wish to de deepen their understanding of the subject. So alternatively, instructors can record tutorials to introduce students to some new concept, equipment that will be used in subsequent classes. So you can, you know, it depends on your planning that what you want to do in your class. Then we will discuss about the MOOCs, which is the most interesting uh, recent trend, and it means Massive open online course. So we can see here in the picture that it, it focuses on scalability. And uh, many of the people can learn at the same time. It is reg uh, The registration is open to all. The content is open to all. Uh, uh, many MOOCs are free of charge. And if you want to earn a certificate, then there are certain paid MOOCs also. Who are the learning learners here? Uh, how the uh, material is being made available to the learners, 
so how the uh, uh, you know the course starts and when the course ends and how the certification is earned so it is a model for uh, delivering learning content online to any person who wants to take a course with no limit on attendance so moocs are online courses available to anyone with a computer and internet connection so this is very much important that there must be an internet connection and a, a you know device to learn they offer students a way to learn in a setting similar to an online class but are usually loosely structured and can be accessed without paying tuition or committing to an academic program so whether a student should sign up for a mooc will depend on his or her academic and professional goals whether you want to go through certain mooc courses but nowadays if you uh, you know um, want to uh, pre service education and uh, if you want to improve your uh, learning you want to uh, uh, learn new courses or new skills by sitting at home with the use of uh, internet uh, with certain devices you can go through mooc courses and you will be able to get it from the various reputed international and national institutions so while moocs have arguably been around for decades but dave cormier is credited with coining the term mooc to describe the connectivism and connective knowledge course delivered by george simmons and stephen downs in 2008 so this is how this course was undertaken online for free and it was taken by almost 2000 people around the world at the same time so this is how the mooc you know become uh, popular around the world around the globe these are the examples of mooc platforms like course era edx udacity Uh, future learn novo ed canvas udemy npte l swam arpit these are the various platforms which are being made available by indian government also so this is how if we incorporate technology in our education system in our curriculum transaction uh, it can improve uh, the way the education is delivered today so it open you know a better progress of monitoring it open education limitless supply of knowledge it it is available made available to the larger audience uh, better interaction and collaboration is possible better retention you know for a longer time is possible uh, learning is being done at one's own pace which is very important for the learners who are not able to go through whatever is being taught at that uh, you know at that moment so it can be engaging by making use of various resources online or offline or by by going through the blended learning so uh, this with this uh, we have uh, you know gone through various kinds of recent trends which are being used in our educational technology in our classrooms and which is very much required by the teacher trainees to learn because they are the ones who are going to become future learners future uh, teachers who are uh, going to engage uh, you know the classroom environment uh the the learning uh, through this these kind of trends is not only done in the classroom but it is you know possible to uh, make learning possible outside the classroom also so with the help of various devices because in many countries the students are uh, given devices like ipads to work on they have uh, uh, with the resources available they they can go through various uh, devices and make use of uh, various things which are being taught by the teachers with the help of uh, technology so you have numerous references available online where you can find out going through uh, the indian uh, you know ministry website uh you can also find out more about the online education how it is beneficial for the teachers you can go through various uh, you know youtube tutorials where you can find out how you can make use of various tools which are available to you or, uh, or you can you know how you can uh, sim perform certain simple tasks which you want to learn but you are not able to do that because of the lack of knowledge so this is very much possible now through various references which are made available to you now we will move on to our next section that is the evaluation questions and question number 1 is it comes from greek word techne which means an art or craft so the options here given are technique technology technician or telepathy 
And the correct answer is technology. So technology has been, you know, taken from the word techne, which is a Greek word, and it means art or craft. So this is with the art and craft, we are, you know, uh, able to uh, uh, imbibe technology in every field of our daily working. The next question is, the use of technology to enhance learning process is called DASH in education. The options are IT, ICT, information technology or communication technology. So the correct answer is ICT and the full form of ICT is information and communication technology. So this is very much, you know, important, not just we want the information, but it should be communicated well also. So this is why the term ICT is being used in education and this enhances uh, the learning process. Then the next question is, which of the following is Doordarshan's educational television channel? So this is also one of the part of educational technology. And the options are Gurukul, Gyan Bharti, Gyan Darshan, or Vidya. And the correct answer is Gyan Darshan, which is the educational television program uh, channel, which provides various programs in, of a uh, 